I am the most relieved person in this room. <laughs> when the African Union approached our office on the possibility of South Africa serving as host to a round of peace talks, I must admit I was initially extremely reluctant. And my response to the African Union was, hmm, I have to think about it. And after I've thought about it, I have to approach President Ramaphosa. When I spoke to President Ramaphosa, he said, of course, Minister, we cannot decline. It is a duty that South Africa must assume and undertake, right up to the logical conclusion of peace. So colleagues have to thank President Ramaphosa because I was very nervous. <laughs> Allow me to welcome, on behalf of the people and the government of South Africa, the successful negotiation of this cessation of hostilities agreement between the federal government of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. We extend our congratulations to the leaders on both sides. For us, this agreement signals a commitment to ending the use of force to settle differences and disputes and confirms the correctness of our own country's principled policy position that political differences are best resolved through meaningful dialogue and diplomacy. This agreement also underscores the importance that the leaders on both sides have attached to the lives of their people, including to the fighting forces, to their families, to women in their communities, as well as to the suffering children of war. The message that comes out of these talks is clear. There are no winners in war and wars do not solve problems. Invariably, the underlying reasons for conflict will persist unless they are resolved through dialogue. The use of force serves to destroy lives, livelihoods, infrastructure, and to merely prolong human suffering. This is why, as South Africa, we've always urged the African Union, that as a continent, we must give much more focused attention to preventative interventions, structures, and mechanisms. Peace building is much more difficult than waging a war. The real heroes are those who work toward building peace and sustaining it. We therefore humbly call on the leaders of both sides to continue to work toward maintaining this peace through implementing the agreement in full as they have committed to do in front of us. The engagement to build stability, to sustain peace, must continue in Ethiopia and lead to the securing of an enduring peace. We are honored as South Africa to have been the host for these talks, and we are keen to provide further support to the African Union, working closely with the facilitation team to ensure that peace is indeed maintained in our sister country, Ethiopia. It is absolutely imperative that we thank the facilitators and the observers for the hard work that has been undertaken. We thank His Excellency President Olusegun Obasanjo, His Excellency former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and Her Excellency former Deputy President Pumzile Mlambuwonguka. We also thank colleagues of the African Union Commission and all the observers as well as the resource personnel who have helped steer the talks. It is our hope 
as the people and government of South Africa that we are very soon going to be enjoying a celebration with the people of Ethiopia and indeed with all the people of Africa because this agreement offers the hope that it is possible that as Africans we can silence the guns throughout the continent. Our president, President Ramaphosa, has directed me to congratulate all of you and to confirm his government and our country's readiness to continue playing any positive role that you may wish us to play. We are heartily encouraged by this example and we are indeed really privileged and honored that this first sign that our path, our walk to silencing the guns is a, probably a successful one. We are absolutely privileged that that path and walk has begun here in South Africa. I thank you, moderator. Today marks two years less one day since violence and war broke out in the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray. Over this period, the African Union has been persistent in seeking ways and means of bringing about peace, security and stability in Ethiopia and ensuring that the development and progress of Ethiopia as a wholesome and an inclusive society will not be truncated. Fourteen months ago, the AU Commission Chairperson, Ambassador of Musafaki Mohammed, appointed me as High Representative for the Horn of Africa to promote peace, security, and stability. Over the last 14, year, 14 months, I consulted regional leaders and stakeholders within Ethiopia, within other IGAD member states, within Africa, and with development partners outside Africa. In Ethiopia itself, I visited some regions several times while I visited Tigray region eight times. Only last month, and for the purpose of the exercise that has brought us here, the chairperson of the AU Commission appointed my brother, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and my sister, the Deputy President of uh, the former Deputy President of South Africa, Punsuli Mambo Nkunka, to join me in moving the process forward. Today is the beginning of a new dawn for Ethiopia, for the Horn of Africa, and indeed for Africa as a whole. Let me hasten to thank God for this new dawn. We are seeing in practice and actualization what we have tried to achieve for ourselves over the years. And that is African solution for African problems. We also see in today's peace agreement signing exercise, the implementation of Agenda 2063, which embodies silencing the gun in Africa. The two, part, the two parties in the Ethiopian conflict have formally agreed to the cessation of hostilities as well as to systematic orderly, smooth, and coordinated disarmament 
restoration of law and order, restoration of services, unhindered access to humanitarian supplies, protection of civilians, especially women, children, and other vulnerable groups, among other areas of agreement. The agreement also takes care of assurance of security for all concerned within and outside Ethiopia, monitoring, supervising, verification of implementation will be carried out by the AU high-level panel. For what you have achieved, delegates from both sides, working together among yourselves, we salute you, we commend you, and we congratulate you. Let me say for us facilitators, this moment is not the end of peace process, but the beginning of it. Implementation of the peace agreements, implementation of the peace agreement signed today is critical to the success of the process. On behalf of the AU, the panel members, the delegates, the observers, and the experts that have been around, I express our deep appreciation to President Cyril Ramaphosa and the government of South Africa for being a wonderful host and for such a splendid arrangement made for the success of these talks. The three observers here, the UN, the IGAD, and the US, as well as others who are not rep represented here, are all very much appreciated. In this regard, we particularly thank the Africa Development Bank and the European Union for their financial support and the United Nations for their logistical support over the last 14 months. I must not forget to thank the staff of the Africa Union Commission, particularly those in the Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security, led by the Commissioner Ambadra Bankoli Adeoye with the invaluable support of Director Sergio Ba for their commitment and dedication to duty. Let me emphasize that the eyes of the world will now shift from the talks to the implementation. The leaders of both sides have supported the delegates to achieve what has been achieved. Finally, let me once again congratulate all the delegates. Well done. You have made all Ethiopians at home and abroad winners in this agreement. Please positively move on move up and move forward, leaving the past behind. Ethiopia is a great nation and shall continue to be a great nation and pride to all Africans. My brothers, I thank you and God bless you all. Dear Excellencies, dear friends, on behalf of the participants from the Ethiopian government in these peace talks, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude 
to the African High Level Panel led by His Excellency former President Olusei Gulobasanjo, the AU High Representative for the Horn of Africa, His Excellency former President of Kenya, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta, and Her Excellency Deputy former Deputy President of South Africa, Dr. Fumzile, President of South Africa and AU member panel of the wise. We have benefited from your immense leadership, the experience and wisdom over the course of these talks and in helping us get to South Africa. In these talks, you offered your guidance and support to the two sides. We are proud that you've shown the world the reservoir of wisdom in our continent and our capacity to resolve our problems. We are pleased that you've accepted to support the implementation of the agreement we've signed today. Your work stated with the initiative of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Mr. Musa Faki Mohamed. We applaud his vision and leadership. Commissioner Bankole Adoe, Dr. Alhaj Sajoba, and their colleagues deserve our appreciation for their tireless work. Our deep appreciation goes also to His Excellency President Sere Ramaphosa, the President of the Republic of South Africa, and indeed to the people of the Republic of South Africa for their generous hospitality. We are grateful to Her Excellency Dr. Nadeli Pander, South Africa's Minister of Department of International Relations and Cooperation, for the excellent facilities she put at the disposal of the talks. We are indebted to all her colleagues for putting an extra hours to ensure the conditions are for the peace talks to continue and reach these positive conclusions. We thank the observers, Dr. Wakina Geroyo, the Secretary General of IGAD, Sana Tete, the Special Envoy for the Secretary General of the United Nations for the Horn of Africa, and Ambassador Mike Hammer, the U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, for accompanying and supporting these peace talks. We shall count on their continued support to Ethiopia to quickly move toward this rebuilding communities affected by this conflict. The level of destruction is immense, and thus that means are massive. We thank our brothers from the other side also for their constructive engagement to allow the country to put this tragic period of conflict behind us. It is now for all of us to honor this agreement. We must be true to the letter and the spirit of this agreement. The people of Ethiopia expected more than the text of this agreement. They demand peace and harmony. They desire development. They have charted a promising and bright future. The government of this part will take, the government on its part will take various proactive measures to nurture democracy and inclusive development in the country. Our democratic institutions have started delivering tangible progress. We will continue the institutional strengthening process. We have charted an inclusive national dialogue process to put Ethiopia on an even stronger foundation. In the course of this conflict, we have also witnessed a complicated picture of the relations with various foreign actors. Our sisters and brothers from Africa remain true to their principal distance that Ethiopians must own and resolve their differences. They advised and encouraged us to reach this day. We hope others will learn that such a generous and firm direction is the one to take in dealing with such a delicate situation. Friends of Ethiopia deserve also our special thanks. It is now time to revitalize our relations with our partners and put them on a solid footing based on principles of international law governing international relations. We look forward to exploring ways of reinvigorating our ties with all our partners. We thank you all for your patience and support of Ethiopia, and I invite you to visit us and admire the wonders of our country while we keep on joining hands for our future betterment and enjoy also our hospitality of our people. I thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the AU and the AU High Level Panel for uh, having conducted a successful negotiation uh, the last 10 days. Obviously, uh, the last 10 days were not a particularly exciting experience in the sense that 
there was so much haggling over what would otherwise be considered trivial issues. Uh, but ultimately, the fact that we have reached a point where we have now signed an agreement uh, speaks volumes about the readiness on the part of uh, the two sides to lay the past behind them and to, to, to chart a new path of peace level. Making peace obviously has proved more difficult and more intractable and elusive than presiding over the killing and destruction, the killing of women and children and destruction of property. The war in our part of the country the last two years has claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and has turned Ethiopia once in the cusp of great economic progress into a bad parody of itself and caused tremendous suffering to the people of the globe. Our people have been killed not only through bullets but also for lack of food and medicine. Our children do not go to schools. Our hospitals are not functioning because of the war. We have always felt this war was imposed on us and we have always been ready to do everything in our power to stop this war. Now that we are here to sign an agreement uh, to at least explore the opportunity uh, to see if we can make peace, and it is still with, it is with a reach, uh, it will come as a relief not only to the people of Tigray, but also to the entire Ethiopian population. And I hope, it's my hope and expectation that the two parties will continue to honor their commitment and redouble their efforts to make sure that the agreement they have signed is implemented and, and, and in a manner that satisfies the interest of our people. As you know, the humanitarian crisis has been particularly dire, and the fighting in the last 70 days has claimed more, more lives. As we speak, as we speak, as we are here ready to sign an agreement, thousands of uh, combatants from both sides, as well as civilians, are uh, losing their lives. So it is incumbent upon us not only to sign this agreement, but also to make sure that it's immediately implemented and the follow-up activities that are required to make sure such an agreement is implemented to the fullest extent possible are carried through in earnest. And on our part, we are ready to do everything in our capacity to expedite the implementation of the, this agreement. And it's our hope and expectation that our brothers from Addis Ababa will do the same. Uh, Obviously, like I said, uh, we cannot solve our problems where there is, when there is too much testosterone uh, in the room. Obviously, some of you have been complaining that the delegates from both sides uh, have little in the way of feminine presence. And people advise us that probably the presence of women would have made a difference as far as making peace uh, is concerned. So when there is too much testosterone, and where there is too much willingness on the part of the two sides to fight till the hell freeze over, it is the children and the women who find themselves at the receiving end of the suffering. And unfortunately, it's unfortunate uh, for myself and my comrades here who have once served in the same government. It took traveling all the way to South Africa, I'm not complaining. Uh, that I traveled to South Africa. I have always loved being in South Africa, but it is quite tragic. It took a haggling of several months for us to come together and explore an opportunity for peace. Now that uh, Chief Obasanjo, uh, President Kenyatta, uh, and Deputy President Fuzile have done their job well enough, simply means we have a new beginning and we have to build on that new beginning. Uh, for us, children, our children, who have been away from schools, need to go back to schools or to whatever is left of our schools because the destruction is quite immense, as Rerwan has pointed out. And the destruction in Tigray has been even more particularly immense. Our children have to go to schools, they have to have medicine, the humanitarian crisis needs to be addressed, and this requires not just a pause in peace, a peace pause, but a serious 
effort on the part of the two sides and the international community. More particularly, the AU panel and the AU commission, the AU uh, as an institution, to do everything within their power to make sure that this peace, this agreement holds. Uh, as far as those parts are concerned, we have made painful concessions because addressing the pains of our people is far more important than the kinds of concessions we have made. Yes, we have made concessions because we have to build trust and we have to make sure that every one of us builds on that trust. But like uh, President Obasanjo clearly pointed out, to sign an agreement is one thing, but to implement it is entirely different. And our focus should be on implementing it, not because uh, we are wary of fighting, but rather because our, des our people deserve every ounce of it. Uh, it's our hope and expectation that both sides will, 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 will remain faithful to the commitments they have entered. And it's also our hope and expectation that the verification and monitoring mechanism we are going to put in place will, will be an ironclad one and the international community needs to throw its weight behind such a process so that we can avoid a relapse into the kind of uh, uh, traditional proclivity to resolve differences by shooting at each other. So I hope uh, our effort to silence the guns would be followed through in earnest and our people deserve all the peace in the world and we need to rebuild communities which have already been shattered as a result of such a bloody war that has continued for the last two years and it still continues. I know there are spoilers from, from, from nearby, from inside our ranks, from the neighborhood, and we also know they would not stop at nothing to sabotage our peacemaking efforts. And it is only through our collective resolve that we can hold these spoilers in check, whether they are